Hi everyone. Now we are going to discuss a topic called hydrogen ion concentration in biological fluids and pH measurement. Okay, so let's see first what is a hydrogen ion and then we'll go into the detail. See the small size of this hydrogen uh, ion and the great mobility that is movement of or getting transferred from one molecule to another of this hydrogen ion making it to be of uh, supreme significance in chemical as well as in the biological process. And the tendency of hydrogen uh, ion to dissociate from its, that is hydrogen, to dissociate from its original combination determines the probability of the reaction. That means whatever the reaction is, how much uh, it is going to dissociate, it depending upon that, it is going to be of a classified other it is going to be of a acidic in nature or basic in nature. For example, if you consider the pure water, the pure water pH is always neutral, it is of a 10 to the power of minus 7, that means the hydrogen ion concentration is 10 to the power of minus 7. So if you are going to add some acid to this water, its hydrogen ion concentration increases and OH minus ions decreases. And for the convenience, if the concentration of H plus ion increases to 10 to the power of minus 2, the OH ion concentration reduces to 10 to the power of minus 12. In such situation, this hydrogen ion concentration is going to be of playing a very a crucial role for its study, isn't it? So then hydrogen ion concentration, how it is going to be of uh, uh, important? So what is it? Everything we'll discuss in detail now. The acidity or alkalinity of a solution depends upon hydrogen ion concentration. That's what we uh, discuss it now. For example, an increase in the hydrogen ion concentration leads to acidity, and decrease in the hydrogen ion concentration leads to alkalinity. So we are going to get some confused. What is this hydrogen ion concentration? Why we are repeating this term? So for our convenient or in general for the conveniently, this hydrogen ion concentration is going to be expressed as pH. Yes, pH. The lower the pH, the higher the hydrogen ion concentration. So then what is this pH? So the pH is a term that was going to be introduced by Mr. Sorsen, that is a P. L. Sorsen in the year 1909 and he was a Danish chemist okay and uh, according to him the pH refers to the hydrogen ion concentration that is either acidity or alkalinity of a solution and he also said that this is a negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration of a solution uh, and then pH scale refers then another term called as a pH scale which refers to the strength of an acid or a base. So here is your pH scale. So this is going to be covering a range of 0 to 14 and the center 7 is going to be treated as a neutral pH where the pure water has a pH of 7 and it is going to be considered as neutral. So this one. Okay. And uh, solutions with pH less than 7 are all going to be considered as acidic solutions and the solutions above 7 are all going to be considered as basic solutions or alkali solutions. So it is important to remember that the pH is logarithmic function that is logarithmic function that means a change of one pH unit represents that means just a one pH change represents the tenfold change in the hydrogen ion concentration. So tenfold that means the multiples of the tenfold hydrogen ion concentration is going to vary just the change of a uh, one a change of one pH okay. So here uh, just look here we are having the pH scale ranging from 0 to 14 and here is the center uh, where we consider the pure water is neutral and below which is acidic and above which is basic, isn't it? So what is happening the acidic? What is the hydrogen ion concentration here? So you are going on having the increase of the hydrogen of concentration as you move below the 7. And as you are going on moving above the 7, the hydrogen ion concentration decreases. And what about the hydroxide ions, that is OH minus ions, it is vice versa. Here they are below the 7 they are going to be decreased in number 
and from the 7 above the 7 they are going to be of increasing in factor. So this is how the pH scale is going to have a very prominent role of uh, deciding uh, whether it's an acid or a base. Okay, so then uh, we are moving uh, to the thing and why there is a need of uh, studying this pH means uh, the acidity or alkalinity of an environment can greatly affect our microbial growth. So that's the why we are uh, supposed to read about this pH concept though it is a chemistry related. Okay, every microorganism has a pH range within which growth is possible and typically shows a well-defined growth pH optimum. So most organisms shows a growth range of uh, having uh, about the pH of just 5 to 8. Most of the organisms uh, shows the neutral pH range only to grow. And there are some exceptions where they go uh, lower that is going to be called as acidophiles and more than the 7 those are going to be called as basophiles or alkalophiles. So let's have a look how this pH and the microbial growth are going to have. So as I told you, microbial growth and its activity are strongly affected by the pH of the medium. And then microorganism has a pH range where they are going to show this maximum growth and that pH is going to be defined as the optimum pH. In general, as I told you, their pH is going to be a neutral range that is 5 to 9 pH. And usually they cannot tolerate below or above this pH. But there are certain exceptions as I told you. So for example, check the urinary tract infections. Uh, they are able to grow even at the pH level that is more alkaline conditions. And some fungi are able to grow below 5 that is in acidic conditions even at the, as low as 2, the pH 2. And some plant and soil microorganisms grow in relatively alkaline environments okay so this is a relationship of the uh, ph and the microbial growth then moving to the ph measurement the ph measurement is also going to be uh, the thing that we are supposed to discuss here so that means how you are going to determine the ph of a solution the ph measurement of a solution uh, to determine to acidity or alkalinity were formerly accomp uh, accomplished with a uh, color uh, papers or color indicators where we call them as pH papers, isn't it? And many a time, however, the shades of color or uh, susceptible change is difficult to determine that whether this is a pH of what, isn't it? So these all confusions were kept in, to an end by the introduction of this uh, electronic instruments. So these electronic instruments has eliminated this drawback by sensing the ion concentration and indicating the pH value on a meter. And some of the modern instruments uh, have a digital display also of this pH uh, reading. Okay, The instrument of the measurement of the pH is called as pH meter. That means the instrument that we are using for the measurement of the pH is being called as pH meter. Okay. Now we will discuss about the pH meter in detail. So this is a figure of the pH meter. So here you can see there are two rods and this is a solution that you are going to have. Okay. And here the two rod names are going to be measuring electrode and one side you are going to have a uh, reference electrode. The reference electrode is also going to be called as a calomel electrode, isn't it? So do you know what is a calomel electrode uh, which is going to be of mercury and mercurous chloride? Yes, we'll come in detail about it one by one. So these are the main components of uh, what we call uh, components of a pH meter mainly having the three one is going to be called as a reference electrode and then we are going to have a measuring electrode then we are going to have a electrometer so the reading at which you are going to see is going to be called as electrometer so this is going to be your reference electrode as I told you we call this as a calomel electrode too and then we are going to have this one the second one is going to be the measuring electrode or glass or electrode. 
So here, the pH meter is essentially fitted with a pair of electrodes connected to a meter scale, yes. So here we are having the two electrodes which are connected to a meter scale indicating our pH. And the pH value of a solution is determined by measuring the direct current voltage produced between these two electrodes which are immersed in the solution. So this is what about the pH meter and we will discuss in detail about the function of these electrodes one by one. So here if you observe, uh, this is all the nodes so you can uh, look after afterwards, okay. And coming to the explanation of this pH meter, as I told you two electrodes are there. The first one is the reference electrode and this consists of a glass tube. So here you are able to see a glass tube with the liquid mercury and mercurous chloride which we call it as a calamine. So somewhere there somebody are going to use the silver and the silver chloride also. And this whole thing is going to be fitted in a reservoir of a solution, saturated solution called as KCl that is potassium chloride. So it may be a liquid or a gel. So this is going to be of uh, produces a constant potential and it is independent of the pH of the solution. It is not going to have uh, anything to deal with the solution. So always it is going to have a constant, uh, what we call it as a constant uh, potential value. Okay, and then coming the second type of the electrode that we are going to have is a measuring electrode or glass electrode we call it as and this is going to uh, contain a silver chloride coated with the, this is what, coated with the platinum wire immersed in a potassium chloride and silver chloride solution. So here you can see, uh, here this is a platinum coated wire and you are going to have a silver chloride solution isn't it so the measuring electrode is the one this electrode is the one which uh, the potential varies with the pH of the solution that means it is going to show the differences or the fluctuations of the electrons uh, mobility in this uh, solution and that is going to be captured by this glass electrode or measuring electrode and that is going to be given to the meter so the measuring electrode is the one which the potential varies with the pH of the solution. Now this electrical contact is established by each of the electrodes. So those two electrodes combination with the solution at the tube end. So both the here you are going to have some sort of a members, uh, feature glass members and fiber net. So where they are well sensitive in finding out the electron mobility and these are going to be uh, members are going to be of very useful for conductive connection uh, to with the solution. Now how it is going to work? As the electrode pays or in contact with the solution that uh, we have kept in the solution. Now the electric output of the complete unit. So this is both rods are going to act as a complete unit, isn't it? So complete unit represents the algebraic sum of the two electrode potential. This potential is constant, it is going to vary. So together you are going to get the thing. The electrode potential of the calomel electrode is constant and that of the glass electrode varies depending upon the solution. That's what I told you. Now this potential changes of uh, about 59 millivolts per pH unit of the unknown solution. Thus when the voltage flow is directed towards the electrometer, that is our meter, or multi voltmeter, the pH value is directly indicated. So whatever the reading that you are going to get here is nothing but the pH of the concern solution that you used. So this is uh, what about the components of the pH meter and the working mechanism. Then moving to the principle, I told you that it's a combination of uh, two electrodes, the glass electrode and the calomel electrode. When dipped in the aqueous solution, they are going to pro produce or develop a potential across the bulb, okay, that uh, is the bulb that we have discussed, this is the bulb, okay, and the EMF, that is a electromotive force of the complete cell, that means both together, rods, electro, that is your glass rod, electrode, and as well as the reference electrode, formed by the linking of these two at a given solution, temp solution at a specific temperature is going to be of E is equal to 
E reference, that is a electromotive force of reference minus electromotive force of glass electrode. So where we know the this reference electrode is going to have a uh, potential stable and this glass is going to show that depends the on the pH of the solution under test. So the resultant of this EMF can be recorded potentiometrically by using vacuum tube amplifier. And the variation of the pH with E may be recorded directly on the potentiometry, uh, that is potentiometric scale or graduated to read the pH. So this is the principle behind this, uh, what we call as a pH meter. So we have gone through the components of a pH meter, how and then working mechanism and its principle. This is very important. E is equal to the E reference, that is a reference electrode, electromotive force minus, you are going to have the electromotive force of a glass electrode. Then what are the applications of this uh, pH meter? Why should we use this one? I told you it is very important to find out the uh, solutions of uh, uh, where you want to grow the microorganisms. Not only that, we are also having some other applications like uh, to measure the pH of the biological fluid such as blood, urine, that is in the biochemical test, majorly blood, urine, gastric acids, such in um, biological fluids, you can measure the pH by using this pH meter. And also we can determine the concentration of the substances by using this pH meter. And we can know the pH of a buffer solution and we can maintain the pH of the reaction conditions by knowing the pH by with the help of this pH meter and we can adjust it. And it is also going to be used to measure the pH of the rainwater. Okay, in the environmental studies, uh, this uh, measuring the pH of rainwater is also important to know the pollutants, all these things. And then to measure the pH of the soil. So in the agriculture fields, knowing the pH of the soil is very important, such that how much buffers we are supposed to add it, all these things uh, is going to have very import, uh, important factor. Uh, for the cultivation of the crops, isn't it? So there, the pH of the soil can be measured by using this pH meter. And then maintaining perfect and accurate pH levels in several daily activities like keeping the milk from turning sore, all these things. And even these pH meters are going to be employed in uh, chemical industries, okay? And utilization of uh, effluent in steel plants, pulp and papers, and even the pharmaceutical manufacturing and in biotechnical, uh, biotechnology practices and some petrochemical industries. So like this, we are having a wide usage of these pH meters in uh, sort of industrial level. And hence the pH meter helps in analyzing the exact pH value of chemical substances and food grades products also, thus ensuring the high levels of uh, safety and quality. So these are the applications of the pH meter. So in this uh, part, we had gone through the hydrogen ion concentration, so which we indirectly call it as a uh, pH and what is a pH and what is the relationship between the pH and the microbial growth and then how you are going to measure the pH and there you are going to use an instrument called as pH meter and we have discussed the structure of a pH meter that is the components of the pH meter. Uh, components of the pH meter, then we have gone through the principle and then applications. Okay, that's ends of this hydrogen ion concentration topic and the pH measurement. Thank you.